Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. Today we're going to be talking about Elon Musk. We're going to be talking about SpaceX. We're going to be talking about Starship. We're going to be talking about the IFT2 launch. And then we're going to be talking about the next launch, the IFT3 launch, and when that will be. So first things first, we know that Elon Musk owns X.com and X and Twitter, whatever it's called, but they only post stuff on there now. SpaceX only posts news on there now. Some of the stuff's on their website. So we're going to be taking a look a lot at their Twitter account today because that's where all the information is. And some of the information that they posted was a beautiful shot of the liftoff of Starship, a shot that you didn't see during the webcast. A beautiful, beautiful shot of the nose of the Starship, the flaps of the Starship. You can see the immense power that's just shaking everything. And you can see the whole rocket all the way up, all 400-ish feet tall of it. And you can see the 33 Raptor engines just pushing out that flame. It's so cool looking. And it was so cool that this camera was gimbaled. Like that's such a unique shot from SpaceX. And here's another one of the stage separation. So there's been some some rumors going around about the stage separation. There's like some some information going around that hasn't been released by SpaceX yet. But the going theory is that there's something going on in the plumbing that just didn't hit right. And then the uh, termination system was hit or the booster disintegrated on its own. Not 100% sure what happened quite yet because it hasn't been released yet. But we're going to take a look real quick at the stage separation of the IFT-2 rocket. Booster 9, ship 25. They do the ship separation right here. The hot staging, as you can see, which is really impressive. They fire some of the Raptor engines. And Elon Musk posted this. But what they do is uh, just these are the engines, right? So instead of shooting them straight down at the dome of the booster, they angle them out a little bit so they can reduce the uh, the impact on the top of the booster's dome. The booster is supposed to do a controlled flip, controlled kind of backflip. And it sh as you can see, it does shoot the, uh, shoot the Raptors and it's trying to reignite, I believe. And then right about here, they do a really quick, really quick backflip and the thing explodes, but they don't show this, show that on this video. And, you know, you'll see, you'll see some doom and gloom posts here and there on, you know, major news outlets where they're saying that this was a failure, that this part of it was a failure. And I would have to completely disagree with them because the goal was to get to hot staging, right? And to pass the hot staging test and icing on the cake, cherry on top, whatever you want to call it, was landing the booster in the Gulf of Mexico softly in the water and it was going to get destroyed anyway so getting you know getting destroyed this way or if it's going to get destroyed in the gulf of mexico whatever you know like, but they're going to learn from this it seems like that could be a fix with software but if it's a huge plumbing problem with the, the fuel sloshing around in the booster in the wrong capacity then spacex might have to go to back to the drawing board and they may have to redesign stuff, but we're going to get to that in a little bit too, because Elon Musk posted something. Musk, Elon Musk posted something about that uh, in another tweet. So let's move on from here. And this is one of the most impressive things that I've seen. Uh, just inspected the Starship launch pad, and it's in great condition. Let's take a look at this. Elon Musk posted this on his X account. Uh, no refer refurbishment needed to the water-cooled steel plate for the next launch, which is great. So Fish and Wildlife Service is going to be really happy about this because they're not going to have to do another investigation about the rock tornado that's that was underneath the IFT-1 launch. And as you can see from the photos posted, there are workers underneath there right now. There's workers under there. They're checking everything out. They're making sure everything's where it should be. And nothing got absolutely decimated. And it looks like from all the photos that I've seen from all the different resources, everything looks really good. And as Elon shows from underneath, it looks like everything is in really good order. So if this is good, then all they really have to do is 
get the next booster and get the next ship up and running and ready for the next launch. And here's the stage separation again. And we're going to be moving on to um, a really cool shot of the stage separation here as well. Here we go. This is just a beautiful shot of the stage separation. Just a photo, not a cool video or anything like that. But you can see the stage separation. And you can see on the side, uh, I'll show you this as well real quick. You can see here where the uh the hot staging really you can really see it in this photo so john kraus on another and this tweet the initial tweet that i showed you about the inspection of the underneath of the of the uh launch pad elon musk said it's all good john kraus photographer amazing photographer from a technical readiness standpoint what's feasible timeline for flight three elon says Starship Flight 3 should be ready to fly in three to four weeks. There are three ships in final production in the high bay, as can be seen from the highway. That was a nice rhyme, Elon. Now, this is important because Elon says three to four weeks, and we know Elon time, three to four weeks could really mean three to four weeks, or it could mean, uh, you know, February of next year. Now there's, of course, the FAA we have to think about. The FAA is important in this whole procedure because they have to clear them for flight. And what happened downrange with the Starship uh, when that exploded as well, they have to figure out why that exploded. And I'm sure SpaceX knows why by now, but they haven't released anything quite yet. And they have to know exactly how the booster exploded and why it didn't do the flip maneuver. So if Elon is ready in three to four weeks, could we see Christmas-ish launch of Starship this year? Or do you think it's going to take a little while for the FAA to approve them? Because the FAA, of course, they're a government body and they take a long time to do anything. So, so it could be like Elon and company could be ready in three to four weeks. Uh, they still have to do static fires. They have to do... Uh, they have to do ground system checkups. They have to fill it up. Uh, with fuel, they have to do uh, stack it again. There's so many things that they have to do. Same thing they did with IFT1 and IFT2, but they have to do it with the IFT3 engines, uh, you know, engines on the boosters. They have to do it on the engines on the ship and make sure that everything works properly, make sure all the plumbing is good to go, and then they can move forward with the launch. And if they're just sitting on the pad for a while and the, uh, you know, the Fish and Wildlife Service seems to be all right at this point, it doesn't seem to be any sort of... Uh, any sort of issue with those uh with that group but the faa seems to be like it might be the biggest thing that's holding spacex back at this point and spacex has to do hundreds of launches according to gwen shotwell in order for them to fly people on the artemis mission uh on artemis 3 and just recently um a, a leader at nasa said that spacex may have to do uh, in the multiple, like in the upper teens of launches for the depot. So if the depot in orbit, the, uh, the fuel depot in orbit. So if they have to do that, they have to get to a cadence where they can do six, seven launches in a week in order to make that right. You know, like they want to do this uh, upper teens, 20 ish, let's just say 20 launches, 20 tankers to get them to the moon. It just seems incredible. Elon has said eight at the most. And of course, we know Elon math. Um, sometimes it works right and sometimes it doesn't work right. So, you know, his his estimates are fairly well <laughs> under what things actually normally happen, you know. So we could see something a little bit different. But they do have to have the cadence go crazy in the next six months. So I'm assuming... These first three flights are going to be so important for SpaceX to get them better every time. And of course, the ship got past the Kármán line, so it got to space, technically got to space. So maybe IFT3 will get to space and will land off the coast of Hawaii and the booster will land in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, it all depends on the FAA now if we can get this done in three to four weeks. That's yeah, Christmas. How crazy would it be if they had another launch this year and then they could reset it for next year? 
you know, they have five launches per year. Of course, they can amend that and get more if they need it. But if they get through at least three launches, uh, you know, then that will tick one off for this year and will free them up for another launch next year. So here's to hoping that that works really well. And here's to hoping that everything in the undercarriage of the, um, of the launch pad goes well and they don't really have to do any upgrades. I mean, Elon said it looks good, but it could have been preliminary, you know, where his staff was saying like, Hey, it looks great. Then Elon was like, looks great. So it doesn't seem like anything from this perspective that, you know, but you never know what happened on the interior because it shook everything. There's also some people nearby and this is sort of a side side uh, rant here, but there were some people nearby that were saying, not nearby, I should say in Brownsville, that were saying that the, the earth shook and it was like an earthquake down there. And, you know, as much as I would like to, um, I would like to believe them. I don't know if this has enough power to shake Brownsville. It's a 30 minute drive from Brownsville, like a 20 minute drive from Brownsville. I know it's powerful, um, but maybe they're feeling the shockwave from the launch. Uh, maybe they weren't actually feeling the shockwave on the ground, but maybe the air turbulence, uh, that shockwave. I don't know. I don't know what it is. The rumble, maybe. Maybe they're feeling the rumble in their chest. I don't know what it was, but... Uh, that's a whole other story. That's a whole other time. <laughs> we'll have to get into that at some other time. So I want to say thank you so much for listening today and watching today. If you have a second, please hit the subscribe or follow button on whatever uh, platform you're on right now. Helps out the show tremendously. We'll continue to grow because of you. If you want to become a member on YouTube, that helps us out even more. And also leave a leave a like and leave a comment down below of what you think is going to happen with the IFT3 launch. All right, take care, everybody. I will see you next time on Space News Pod. All right, bye-bye.